Use of literature to children. The place of literature in a child's life. From the beginning of education in our country, children's literature had always had a place in the school curriculum. Although the emphasis in the literary experiences of young people in school have changed from time to time, the basic commitment to literature as a valuable ingredient to their education has remained. Except for the textbooks for classroom training, children have not been exposed to a wealth of challenging reading materials for their pleasure. Textbooks are not enough, books that young people can read for their own enjoyment and profit are needed. The practical values of children's book have not been fully recognized. Because of the dearth of reading materials, children turn to everything within their reach, anything that is accessible to them, like comics, songbooks and magazines that are done hardly in good taste especially the local comics that abound in magazine stands on practically every corner. They watch mediocre TV shows and listen to the soapbox operas and other humdrum radio programs. Movies that claim to be of social relevance are nothing more than the glorification of the feasts of infamous characters endowed with folk hero appeal and are nothing more than exercises in erotica. This kind of environment produces a deprived child with questionable values in life. Those existing conditions are not impossible to change as long as there are people who are aware of the needs of the child and are willing to do something to counteract what brought such conditions. These changes should be a cooperative undertaking combining the efforts of those who touch the child's life, parents, teachers, as well as librarians. A child's appreciation of good literature comes partly from exposure to simulating stories in books that starts at home. Teachers, librarians as well as parents, can work effectively in developing in children a love for literature to expand the horizon of children and enhance their worth as children who will someday become worthwhile adults who can contribute to their country's progress and prosperity or who can be versatile in meeting the challenges of a rapidly changing milieu. The world of books offer children opportunities for developing into citizens and well-rounded personalities who will be assets to their family and society. Through books, they may partially fulfill their basic emotional needs. Needs, an indispensable condition for personality development. Books are no substitute for living, but they can add immeasurably to its richness. When life is difficult, they can give momentary relief from trouble, or a new insight into problems, or a source of information, comfort and pleasure to those who know how to use them well. This is as true for children as well as to adults. There is a therapeutic value of literature that must be recognized. Literature provides emotional release, and, in reading the writings of others, many children are able to project themselves so that they receive help from others. They come to understand human nature by learning that their problems are not unique. Through literature the child develops his taste in reading for pleasure. If he experiences satisfaction in the stories the teachers read, he will seek out this satisfaction in other stories. Satisfaction, happiness, contentment, fun, joy, positive release, pleasure. All of these should accompany the literature period in the classroom. Literature fulfills a need in the classroom which does not confine it to the language arts alone. It touches on every aspect of living and should be an integral part of the school program. At least every day or in some situation or instances more than this, a teacher should read a poem or story or tell a story to the children regardless of their age range or grade placement. There is a wealth of good literature for every occasion that the teacher can choose from. Children need literature in order to enrich their own language. Literature is a beautiful language, thus freeing him to expose its meaning and requiring him to use his higher mental processes of thinking, perceiving, remembering, forming concepts, generalizing and abstracting are made possible as the child acquires his vocabulary. Children's literature contribute towards creative development in boys and in girls and offers many opportunities for creative teaching. The creative teaching of literature can contribute to the creative development in many ways. 1. It can stimulate children to write for themselves. Children who write their own literature are always eager to see what others write. 2. It can help build a vocabulary that will help the child to express himself better. 3. It can help children build skill in expression. 4. It can develop a sensitivity to sight, 
words, life's problem and people. Literature provides various experiences which enhances the development of children. They can increase their knowledge, change their outlook, broaden their interest, develop desirable attitudes and values, refine their tastes, modify their behavior, and stimulate intellectual and emotional growth and in various ways help to prepare them for effective participation in social processes and for living life fully. Literature is entertainment. Along with radio, television, movies and picture magazines, sometimes should be reserved for reading. The reading of fine prose and poetry helps to take children away from the urgencies and care of living and refresh their spirit. Children should be properly motivated and guided to read good books. Oftentimes children do not have the time to read because they are laden heavily with homework and they hardly have time to read for pleasure. Overdependence on textbooks have forced children to exist on an impoverished literary diet. The best motivators for developing in children the desire to read are the parents, the teachers and the librarians. There are many techniques, activities, devices which can be used to develop children's interest in literature. The tasks of parents, teachers, librarians and even writers is to guide the children into the world of books where they will find joy and interesting works that can satisfy their various purposes for reading. However, it is not enough to encourage the children to read. Children who, through intimate, daily contacts with the best in children's literature, know that a good book is the best of friends, today and forever. Relationship between children's development and literature, children's reading interest children's reading materials, when chosen in the light of their needs and interests, serve as one of the essential factors in their development in the various phases and growth. Good literature brings the child into contact with great mind and various forms of experience, increasing his knowledge of human nature and of the expanding world around him. Literature does not only increase the child's knowledge about life and living but can also become a springboard for creative writing, dramatics, art and music. In order to achieve these desirable changes in the child through literature, it is necessary to know each child, his interest, capacities, needs and aspirations. Parents, teachers, librarians share the same responsibility of helping him find the right books and provide activities that are related to his interests and needs. Interests is an expression of an individual's pattern of reaction or behavior toward himself, his environment, his associates and the situations he may find himself. Interests develop from early childhood and progresses onward as a result of experience. An interest can be interpreted as a motivating force that stimulates the individual to participate in one activity rather than in another. Needs has been defined as the desire for what are called or considered necessities. Need is a lack of these necessities. Needs are strong motivation that have to be met. It has been classified in several ways, physical, mental, emotional, social, moral and spiritual, aesthetic, economic and recreational. Certain basic needs are common to most people at most times. A child's needs at first are very strongly personal, but as he grows up and matures, they become broader and more socialized. 1. Need for material security The child's need of material or economical security comes first and begins in his mother's or father's arms. It extends gradually to include regular routine of eating and sleeping and everything that gives him comfort and well-being. The old fairy tales were told by people who didn't have enough to eat or to keep them comfortable. So their stories were full of brightly burning fires, tables filled with plenty of good food, fine clothes and splendid palaces. 2. Need for emotional security Every child feels the need to be loved and wanted. Stories about home life are popular to children of all ages. Emotional security is a higher kind of security than material or economic security. It has an inner and spiritual quality made up of love, courage and happiness. The fundamental factors of security which every child should have and build into his ideals of family life. Such stories such as Laura Ingalls, Little House on the Prairie, and Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, fill this need. 3. Need for intellectual security Spiritual security enables the individual to surmount dangers, overcome tragedies. Spiritual security is the result of a strong religious beliefs. Spiritual security grows out of a belief in God. There are books, such as Little Women, and Little House in the Prairie, 
and other books that do not refer to specific religious groups or practices. Some old fairy tales carry the message that decent and kind people will eventually overcome hardship and evils if they face them with courage and perseverance. When children read the biographies of heroes or saints of different religious beliefs, such as St. Francis of Assisi, John Wesley, Father Damien, Florence Nightingale, and many others, they understand that emotional security is a driving force in the lives of men and women. The child is moved by stories about parents' self-sacrifice for their children, a boy's aspiration to obtain an education, or a country's struggle for independence. Through reading of good books covering experiences broader that his own a child or even an adult will realize that there can be no security for anyone unless there is a security for all. 5. The need to belong growing out of the need for security is the need to belong and to be accepted member of a group. A child starts by saying, am my mommy, or, my daddy, or, my big brother, with great pride. These may be signs that he is beginning to identify himself with his family and then later on identify himself with his gang, his school, his community and perhaps with other world groups. It is important to give children books of people of other lands, races or creeds that are honestly and appealingly presented. 6. The need to love and be loved Every human being wants to love and be loved. It is in his family that the child learns his first lessons in the loves of affectionate relationships. His sense of security develops from these family patterns. When family relationships are normal and happy, a child starts his life with healthy attitudes. If he feels he is loved and he knows that his love is accepted, he in turn will learn to love other people outside his family. If he feels unloved and unwanted, he is suspicious and antagonistic towards other people. Stories about good family relationship are helpful to young people. Stories about animals defending or protecting their young are appealing. The need to love and be loved, family affections, warm friendships, devotion to pets, lead a child in later years to look for stories about romance. A well-written story showing all the aspects and complications of romance, its danger as well as its happiness, can provide young people the needed guidance into life's fundamental problem. Fairy tales about prince and princesses help little girls to think of themselves as a princess and little boys think of themselves as a prince. 7. The need to achieve, to do or be someone worthy of respect children, as well as adults, have a strong desire to achieve, to do something for which they will be respected and loved. The child's first heroes are his father who buys things for him and his mother who prepares the food. Children enjoy the tales of adventure, mystery and the career stories. Interest and devotion to worthy cause, untiring service to the needs of others leads children to read about the lives of people who had worthy achievements. Biographies help the child's need for achievement and stirs him to emulation. 8. Need for recreation and change One of the needs of the human beings is top rest and to play as a part of the desire for change. If we work and study hard, we need rest and play. Children need freedom from pressures. Some children suffer from failure in school, family troubles, or feeling of social and physical as well as mental inferiority. They seek escape in books, sensational comic books, useless materials of any kind, may provide children with temporary release from their problems. Children need literature that will take them away from ill effects of the increasing social, political, economic and religious tensions and fears of our modern world. Books of many kinds may be used to meet the child's need for healthy change. The old fairy tales are full of heroes and heroines who accomplish difficult and sometimes impossible tasks through their good deeds, courage and perseverance. Modern fairy tales provide laughter and imaginative adventures that dissolve fear and tensions. 9. The need for aesthetic satisfaction The need to adorn, to make beautiful, and to enjoy beauty is another human need. Man seeks aesthetic satisfaction in one form or another and at various degrees of taste. Man may find satisfaction in music, dancing, painting, sculpture and literature. Aesthetic satisfaction comes to both the adult and the child's aesthetic taste depends not only upon the material he is given and upon how it is presented. Years to look for stories about romance. A well-written story showing all the aspects and complications of romance, its danger as well as its happiness, can provide young people the needed guidance into life's fundamental problem. 
Good literature can help children to understand and satisfy these basic needs vicariously if not in reality. The reading interests of children as shown by the result of several researches give a sequential development from one age level to the next. These developmental reading preferences provide a scientific basis in the preparation and selection of their reading materials. Before the age of two years, reading interests arise from experience that go back to early infancy. The beginning of this early interest in books are observed in the child's handling of books, his interests in looking at pictures, his poses as though he is reading and making baby sounds as he looks at the pictures and his desire for storytelling and being read to. Many children enjoy being read to because of the different sounds they hear. From three to six years, at this age group children show live for factual stories, rhymes and jingle, stories with attractive illustrations that can be discussed with an older person. Children are interested in what happened, what could happen, and fanciful stories. Children 8 and 10 children between the ages of 8 and 10 begin to read for themselves. Their interest in is in folk and fairy tales. Along with these tales they love stories about real children. Boys and girls have the same reading interest, children from 11 to 12. Around 11 to 12 years, girls show more interests in stories about home life and domestic happenings, in romance and in quiet social situations. Boys show greater interest in vigorous adventure and aggressive action. Bright, average and slow pupils have nearly the same interests. These pupils either read more informational materials in non-fiction or show interest for humor and adventure. High school age level. The older group of children show interest in history, biography, magazine articles dealing in social and natural environment. They enjoy humor and reading about hobbies, about children and their own age group. They read stories that deal with situations that are not only impossible but nonsensical and they also read books about travel, nature, history, description about other land and people. They prefer honest and factual material in books dealing with science. The content is what interests them most, new information, explanations of how animals live and how things work, how to explore and experiment rather than rhapsodies about the glories of nature and subjects in books. Thank you.